keep on posting you will attract your target audience your tribe i always tell people do what is authentic to you <laughs> love-hate relationship but we're gonna make it work all right we are in the car we made it without getting rained on too bad good morning again so today yes <laughs> oh she didn't do the third grade introduction i'm getting better <laughs> you are you are so i'm doing more vlogs and i'm trying to do like q a style vlogs where i like answer questions give advice while i'm also you know working just to let y'all see what it would be like to hang out with me for the day okay so today is Thursday and we are kicking off the weekend really strong. I'm hype. I'm doing my first, well, this isn't my first interview, but I feel like this is my, is my first interview this year? This year. Yeah, this is my first interview this year. And um, I got an email a couple of weeks ago and it said, hello, Shay. This is from Uncle Funky's daughter. If you don't know, this is an amazing hair care line, black owned, period. And it's funny, this is a full circle moment because I used to use Uncle Funky's daughter when I had my afro, when I'm afro. When I had my curly natural hair out, well, I still have curly natural hair, but you know, I cut it into a bob and I don't I don't really wear it curly anymore. So I used to use their products when I had my fro and now I use their products on Gigi's hair because she has super curly hair just like mommy. And yeah, it's like a full circle moment because when I got this email that I'm about to read y'all, it just really brought things into perspective. Like, wow, these are brands that I really love and use in my everyday life. And now the fact that I get to work with them in some capacity like this is just chef's kiss okay so it said hello shay i hope 2024 has been off to an amazing start for you and has see you are off to big things this year congratulations on hitting 400k on instagram as you are aware march is women's history month and is and we are eager to collaborate with houston's history makers to spotlight their impactful stories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uncle Funky's daughter is reaching out to propose an exclusive interview with you, delving into your experience as a content creator in Houston. Throughout the month of March, we are showcasing weekly videos on our social media platforms of Houston Trailblazers, and yada, yada, yada goes on to talk more about, you know, how they like that I've been inspiring the girls, and I'm just here for it, y'all. Like, this, this, what y'all are about to see, pay close attention. Y'all about to see my my whole, not even just my brand, but my whole life is about to elevate. We're claiming that in Jesus' name. Amen. I have been, come on, I have been putting in the work. And it just feels good to see uh, everything come into fruition. All the things that I've prayed for and that I've just grinded for and had a lot of sleepless nights for, including last night. Because what time did you go to bed? She went to bed at 3. 3. And we were up at 6. Mind you, I'm calling her back to back. At this point, my, my brain is just fried. I think every hour for like four hours before bed, I call her because something popped up. Oh, look at my car. Look, That's the truck that I want. But I think I want it in white. I'm showing her um, the AMG Benz truck that I want. And I feel like this is a moment because look, it's next to our Tesla. Lord, are you telling me I'm about to get my truck? <laughs> <laughs> but y'all see how, how it looks? Look, this is a nice truck. Okay. Anyways. Right now, I don't want another car note, so I'm good just sharing the Tesla with Jeremiah. Plus, he's a homebody. He don't be, really be going nowhere. I'm the one that be going places. All he can do is go get a haircut and maybe go to Target. So, one car is fine. But, <laughs> mama deserves. Okay, I'm going to get my truck. But anyway, y'all. Um, Yeah, so right now, we are headed to... Well, okay. Here's, here's the agenda for the day. First, we're stopping to get coffee because... It's me. <laughs> we need. Am I doing anything without coffee? Absolutely not. Get some coffee real quick. Then I'm going to go get my makeup done. Then I'm going to do the interview. And I'm going to try to squeeze in some type of content other than just that today. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. We'll see. I do want to take pictures because the outfit that I'm wearing from Akira is wow. actually back in stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So y'all see that shortly. I know. And the weather is trash. Mm. Like, 
Of all days, Houston, really. Um, substitute with almond milk and two extra pumps of white mocha stirred in. Um, yes, and do you have um, the bacon gouda uh, sandwich? Can I get one with no egg, please? Okay. You guys, Marlene is judging me because <laughs> I just ordered a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich with, with no, no eggs. eggs. Guys, with no <laughs> eggs. Like, what kind of sandwich is this? Let me explain. <laughs> so... The bacon Gouda is so, okay, first of all, I love Gouda. That's my favorite cheese. Mm -hmm. It is just, I can't explain it. If you've never had Gouda cheese. So it's a grilled cheese with bacon. Is that what we got? Because that makes more sense. No. <laughs> Gouda cheese is just, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's, the, it's the Beyonce of cheeses, number one. Number two, I don't feel like when you go get eggs from places like this in a drive through it's a real egg. Well, first of all, it's not even that because I've watched them make it before and this is what led me to say no egg. It's already pre-packaged in a little plastic bag and it just, I don't know, it just, it's just weird to me because like, why the egg just sitting in this plastic bag like this? How did it get here and where did y'all pour it from? Did y'all really crack an egg? It just, it just real sus to me. I don't know. I don't like it. And you say this after I ordered my egg sandwich. <laughs> oh, I thought you, um, that was your thing. I don't know. I, I never come to Starbucks. I, have I did no not idea. know. I have no idea. I just ordered the first thing that seemed semi-healthy. That's why I don't have a drink order. That wasn't your jam. Hi. Sorry. I'm slow. Girl, I have no idea what we're doing. I would've put you on game. Okay, y'all. Uh, so we got our breakfast. It's a tropical uh, monsoon outside. <laughs> But now we're headed to make an appointment. And I'm really excited. I just got an email from my accountant and she crunched all the numbers from last year to give me my profit loss breakdown. And I feel like it's important to be fully transparent with y'all and I wanna share some of the um, numbers because I don't know, I feel like, I feel like with content creation, it looks so glamorous and it is like the numbers I'm gonna tell you it's gonna sound like a lot of money and it is to some people but it's not all money that I have in my pocket <laughs> it's not all cash that's just sitting in my account it takes a while to get paid from brands and I want to make sure that I'm always giving the real tea behind the life of being a content creator because again it can be really misleading like people mess around quit their job not realizing that baby you ain't gonna have no check every two weeks okay you might be sometimes getting paid once or twice a quarter and yes it's a lump sum but then you have to know how to budget so I'm gonna break down some numbers for y'all let me just finish my breakfast right quick okay y'all so let me give you all some insight to the content creator world and brand deals and the flow of your year so at the top of the year in Q1 historically brands are just coming back from vacation and you know being close to the holidays and when I say close I mean you know like there's always they're always gonna be working but a lot of times they shut their laptop off they're not they're not really doing too much communication with influencers you know so historically Q1 is very slow last year Q1 it's really a tropical storm <laughs> what's happening I have no idea how I got this bad in my 30 seconds so for example last February 2023 I made zero dollars in brand deals which means I didn't sign any contracts, okay? This year is a different story. So let me actually give you the breakdown of the quarter. Oh yeah, no, it's mom. All right, so so in Q1 of last year, and when I say I brought in this amount, I didn't actually get the cash up front, okay? It takes about anywhere from 60 to 90, sometimes 120 days to get paid from brands. But this is the amount of money I signed contracts for. So in Q1, I signed contracts, this is 2023, $102,850 worth of contracts. Again, $102,850, just from brand deals alone. This doesn't include all of my other sources of income, and I'm gonna explain why it's so important as a content creator that you have other sources of income, okay? Now, for me to sign this amount of this amount in brand deals in Q1 of last year is amazing because first of all, that was more than my salary when I worked in the corporate world and when I worked in education. But, quadruple my salary when I work in education, let's be clear, okay? So that's a blessing in itself because if you watch my past vlog, you know how I've talked about getting laid off while pregnant and just really that uncertainty around my career and how the trajectory of everything just changed once I had faith and trust, well, once I, once I stood on faith, stood on business, stood on faith, trusted God, and how he just replenished and restored everything tenfold. Like, what I lost, I got back double, triple, quadruple. So I thank God for that. Number two, it's really impressive because historically, like I said, Q1 is gonna be very slow for content creators. Because brands are just coming back from their vacations and you know the holiday time, they're not doing too much signing um, 
with content creators, of course, they'll start kicking off their ambassadorships and, and really it's like they're pitching and um, gauging interest at that time. So again, Q1 is not necessarily a time where you can expect to sign a lot of contracts. And I'm talking about for the average influencer. Of course, there are anomalies. You know, your, your top influencers that have millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers, there's always gonna be, like I said, the exception to the rule. But in general, as a content creator, especially one who's just starting out, like some of you watching this video or, or those of you who are just in that building phase, don't be concerned when you don't see a lot of opportunities coming in or if you're pitching yourself in Q1, you're not getting a lot of responses because again, these brands are just catching up, okay? So I just wanted to clarify. Now, let me give you a comparison of Q1 of last year, 2023, when I had maybe 150,000 followers, 130, I gotta go back and look, but. Today, now, we're at over 400,000. For context, at the start of 2024, we had just hit 200,000. So it, <laughs> I kind of saw a huge shift. The numbers I'm about to give you that I'm bringing in now, it's because of the huge jump in my following. I want to clarify. Because there's a big difference in pitching yourself or getting brand deals when you're at 300, 200, 300, and 400K than 100K followers, okay? And also engagement matters. And we'll get into more of that. So Q1 of this year, so far, for February alone, I signed $59,000 worth of contracts. Remember, last February, it was Seto, Nada, Zilp, Zilch, nothing. <laughs> so that is a huge blessing and just it just blows my mind, honestly. Because again, when you are with your back against the wall and you don't know what you're gonna do, what, how your career is gonna go, you gotta trust God. You gotta put your faith in him and know that he's gonna make a way and you have to do the work. And we'll talk about more about that today as well. So Q1 last year, okay, excuse me, February last year, zero. February of this year, 59,000. Now let's talk about the quarter. Last year, qu quarter one, if you're not familiar, the quarter is broken into um, four sets of three months throughout the entire year. So January, February, March is quarter one. April, May, June is quarter two. July, August, September is quarter three, and then October, November, December is quarter four. So when you hear brands or just companies or anyone speak about Q1, Q2, I know a lot of y'all will see that on social media, they're talking about the three month segments throughout the year. And that's how companies operate, that's how you should be operating with your business, looking at forecasting for Q1 through Q4. Um, so for Q1 this year so far, we've secured $147,900 in brand deals. So almost $150,000 in brand deals, and March is not even over. Today is March 21st. So we still got a good 10 days left to maybe scoop a couple more deals up. And I'm telling you this, not to brag, not to boast, or any of that, y'all know that's not me is to give you insight to let you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. So right now we're talking about the good. Like this is all great news, right? Being that we can compare and see that like, yeah, last year totaled in brand deals, Q1, January, February, March of 2023, we did 102,850 in brand deals. And this year we're almost at, and, and March is not even over, we're almost at 150,000. So right there, we'll show you how much hard work can just pay off in a year, right there. Now, let's get into the ugly. Although this looks good on paper, the money is here. We, I'm looking at spreadsheet, I'm looking at numbers, it looks great. It's on the spreadsheet. Baby, it's on the spreadsheet. It's, it ain't here. It, it's, it ain't nowhere near here, baby, it ain't. We gonna have to wait. Listen, when you complete a campaign, there's something called a, first of all, there's something called a campaign window. A lot of brands call it a flight, which means day one that you can post your campaign, through the end of the campaign, meaning when everybody else is done posting, because you're not the only influencer that is running an ad on this product. So for example, let's say I am promoting this phone case, right? And let's say the brand wants to pay me $5,000 to make a reel about this phone case. And they say, okay, your flight is from April 1st to April 31st. And you get paid net 60 or net 90, net 120. Net means the amount of days until we can process the payment to pay you process okay so that means if it's net, net 60 that means 60 days after the the flight campaign closes the window for this phone case which would be the end of april again that's my example follow me follow me april uh, how many days in april 30 or 31 30 30 so that means the day and don't let april 30th be a friday because then look the business is closed on the weekend so now we're getting into territory the dangerous territory because now it's pushing us to the following week so that means whoever is doing payroll processing you're gonna have to wait until they're, and don't let them be on vacation, Lord, now we didn't push it out even further. So 
again, I'm giving you a scenario. I promoted this phone case and I was real pressed. I posted my campaign the first day of the fight. That was April 1st, boom. Now I gotta wait till the whole campaign window closes. Everybody then posted their uh, content. April 30, 30th comes and then whoever is responsible for processing these payments, they go ahead and process it for all the influencers, okay? And if you got an agency like I do, like a uh, representation, a manager, they're processing the payment to go to your manager, not you, okay? Not you. So then you gotta wait 60 days because it's a, again they're paying a lot of people y'all these campaigns are not just one and one and done for one person it's a lot of people involved that's why they say they need net 60 days 90 days 120 my manager usually does really good and she'll negotiate to like sometimes even 30 days Hell, uh, with fancy home buying, i think it was like two weeks like they pay real fast mm -hmm. hello shout out to them so anyway you can also that's another thing you can negotiate your terms before you sign your contract make sure you're if you don't have management make sure you're reading through that and even if you do have management make sure your manager is advocating for you because net 120 is ridiculous, okay? D that don't make no sense. 90, you're pushing it, but I like a standard of 60, and of course, 30 is best practice, but sometimes they just can't do it. So, back to the timeline. Oh, look at that, the monsoon has stopped. I love that for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, back to the timeline. I hope you all are following along. Clearly, I feel like I need my whiteboard, because <laughs> I feel like I'll be teaching y'all, giving y'all lessons, but you, you're, you're gonna follow along with me, walk with me. Now it's been 60 days, you finally get paid out, but if you have management, your manager will get, remember you got $5,000, we're in the example, it was $5,000 to create this reel promoting this phone case. So your manager then gets paid the $5,000, and then you gotta wait for your manager to process the payment, and it all depends, like, some I've seen some agencies that pay their creators every two weeks, like they wait for all the brand deals to accumulate for two weeks and then pay you out, kind of like you have a traditional job. Um, I've seen some managers where as soon as it comes, they process the payment, they send it straight to you. That's what my manager does, thank the Lord. But then um, you still have to wait. You still have to wait for your bank account to receive the money. So now we're talking about a whole nother week. So we can, we can be talking about anywhere between 60 to 75 days just for one reel, okay, that you posted months ago. And that's the reality of it. Now here's the catch. When you get paid, that's tax-free money, baby. You got to put some of that money aside, okay? Because one thing about it, the IRS, don't play. Don't get caught up and try to do no underhanded, backhanded stuff with the IRS because why would you want to take that chance, okay? You really want to play with the government? Has the government ever worked out in our favor? Never. <laughs> so you're going to have to set and money they aside. they that money whether you tell them or not because that 1099 Girl. is going to get cut at the end of the year regardless. Just so y'all know. And don't, yeah, don't try to outsmart the government. They, they made these rules to, <laughs> like, this country is not built for us, all right? If you didn't know by now, I'm not trying to get into a little history lesson, but it don't matter what color you are, baby. They want, the, all they see is green. They're going to snatch that money, all right? <laughs> so don't be that person. You need to make sure that you're having some type of plan. You should have your LLC if we're talking about you getting money from brands, but I'm not here to, to, to preach to y'all. I'm, I'm not here to be your tax consultant. You need to hire a professional. You should be setting money aside so that you can pay quarterly taxes. This is something I had to learn the hard way. I was not doing that. And at the end of the year, well, and at the beginning of the following year, I would get hit with a fat tax bill because I was playing games. So you need to be setting money aside. In addition to that, you also gotta pay your bills because when this lump sum comes in of five, well, it won't be $5,000 unless you work you know alone if you have representation like a manager an agency they're going to take a certain percentage so my manager takes 15 percent off the top i don't even see it i get the rest of it coming to my account so now instead of you receiving five thousand dollars for promoting the phone case if you have management that's taking 15 percent i know people that have managers that take 20 percent 30 percent so i'm just giving you my example so instead of me getting five thousand dollars i would only get four thousand two hundred fifty dollars and then I have to make sure I'm setting aside money for taxes. I'm paying my bills because I don't know when the next brand deal is gonna pay out. Like, thankfully this year, I've been seeing brand deals come in a little bit more frequently because of all the work that I did in Q4. Like, I'm starting to get paid normally every two to three weeks now. But baby, last year, no, I had to wait. Sometimes I will only get paid like twice a quarter. That's twice every three months. And yes, the lump sum was big, let me say that. I would get maybe a $10,000 check but trying to stretch that out over three months, if you don't know how to budget, mm-mm. Because let me tell you what's gonna happen. You're gonna see that money in the account, and you're gonna say, oh, my bills are paid, I'm good. I set aside money for this. I set aside money in my emergency fund. I'm good, I can go shopping. I can go on a trip. 
I can fly out. Like, you're going to start feeling yourself. And how do I know that? Because we here, sis, we here. You are me, I am you. I'm speaking from experience and I'm telling you about yourself because we are one. <laughs> I know my tribe. I know how y'all do. So I'm here to help you not to make the same mistakes that I did and don't get so overzealous where you just spending money frivolously and now you're living branded or branded. Like, I have learned my lesson and now, like, I don't feel comfortable if I have, personally speaking for myself, if my business account has less than $30,000 in it or less than twenty five at at, at at minimum, I start feeling uncomfortable. Like, I I get real nervous and, and anxious if I see that number drop below 25000 because I never know what's going to happen. Like, you want to put yourself in a position where your business can always thrive. God forbid something happens and the brand deals aren't able to pay out or... Hell, times get hard, the roof caves in. You just never know. You need to make sure that your business can stay afloat. Hell, Instagram is having problems every day. It's always glitching. TikTok might get shut down. They talking about this ban that may, might come. Like, what if you only have social media to sustain your business and something happens? You need to make sure that you have a cash flow. You know what I'm saying? You, and you also need to make sure you have investments. But that's a different story for a different day. So, I hope that you feel inspired and motivated. And I'm only telling you that, again, not to brag or boast, but more so to educate you and to let you know the numbers that I'm speaking of, they weren't always there. Like, a couple years ago, if you would have told me that I would get anxiety if I had less than 30000 in my account, I would be like, well, girl, what? <laughs> what? Baby, we trying to keep 300 in the account, okay? The, the goal back then was to have $1,000 in my emergency fund. Like, that... That was the type of anxiety I had. So, again, God has truly elevated and blessed my, my household. And I want the same for you all. But we got to have structure. We got to have discipline. And we have to know when to say no to ourselves. Because all that impulse shopping and impulse just traveling and doing all the things when you see a lot of money in your account, you got to cut that out. And I'm not saying you can't have fun. You can't spoil yourself and treat yourself. Because y'all know I treat myself all the time. But... I do it in moderation. I do it when it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me also break down um, how much I uh, got in brand deals for the entire year so you can understand that and how much I got in affiliate linking because these are two sources of income I really want you all to focus on. Remember, you need multiple sources of income as a content creator, but affiliate linking is so powerful because it's passive, okay? So let me break that down next. Okay, so... Affiliate income for me in 2023, I profited $27,411.19. Don't forget the 19 cents. Strictly from affiliate linking last year. And then in brand deals, okay, there's a difference between your what you uh, brought in and then what you signed contracts for. So in brand deals of 2023, because remember, like I just explained, you're not getting paid out immediately. So a lot of the brand deals, especially in Q4 of 2023, I'm still waiting to get paid out now. So for brand collaborations in 2023, I signed contracts that equal $311,026. What? $311,026. Come on. Won't he do it? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and he did. And did. And he'll do it again. He's going to do it double, triple, quadruple. Okay. So that's what I signed contracts for. That's not what hit my account. What hit my uh, business account, and that's another thing, make sure you keep your money separate. Once you get your LLC, you'll get an EIN, which is short for Employee Identification Number, which is kind of like your social for your business. You need to go ahead and take your EIN down to your local bank or a virtual bank and make sure that you have a separate checking account just for business expenses, okay? So, the amount of money I actually brought in that was paid out, I didn't have to, you know, wait on, $181,928.07 in brand deals. Don't know where the seven cents came from, but here we are. <laughs> so, again, $181,928 in brand deals was paid to me, but $311,026 was actually like Use promised me, if that makes sense. So, you see the way. big difference and why I always tell content creators who are aspiring to, you know, level up their brand, you got to learn how to budget because this could have easily been, I signed, you know, $50,000 worth of brand deals. That's awesome, right? But what if I only got paid Continue. out $10,000 for the right. year? Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to make sure that you know how to budget. 
And this is not something that you're gonna learn overnight. Like my first year of content creation, Use the, right the numbers did not right. look like Talk this. I six ten west. And unfortunately, I can't tell you what the numbers were because I didn't have a business checking account. <laughs> I didn't have any structure. I was just moving off of vibes, keep right, and energy. I had no sense of direction, structure, like no intentionality, no spreadsheets, no In QuickBooks, about two miles, no software. So unfortunately, I can't even tell you how much money I made. But I can definitely tell you it wasn't even close. I mean, I may have done, my, in my first year of doing, you know, content, when I started taking brand deals, I may have made maybe $5,000. I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot at all for the year. Okay? If you don't know, affiliate linking is when I post a product, I'm just using this phone case as an example because it's here. I post this phone case, I use an affiliate link, I post it on my story, on a website, some type of app you purchase it using my link you purchase this phone case and then I get a commission that is an affiliate link for those who don't know and there's plenty of affiliate programs out there my personal favorites are the Amazon influencer program uh, I love their affiliate linking It's super user-friendly and who doesn't have Amazon and LTK I'm also getting into another app called collective voice and if you're new here I did do a video about LTK and I broke down how I make money on LTK and some tips and I also attended LTK's Creator Day. This is a style platform. I mean, they have home and other things too, but it's known for being a style platform if, if you haven't heard of it. And it's its own app. It's like its own social media app that you can scroll, you can shop. But I went to their headquarters in Dallas and I uh, they had an LTK Creator Day, which is basically like a nice day for networking. And they brought us out and we got to hear from the founder and um, their leadership team and there was a panel, it was really nice. So go ahead and watch that and, and catch up on that so you can get some more information on LTK. Now, for affiliate linking, I really love it because it's passive. I can post an affiliate link one time and it lives forever. It'll be in my highlights, on my website, on my LTK, on my Amazon storefront. And anytime someone goes and shops, I will always get the commission from that. So this is the definition of making money in your sleep. Now, a lot of people get a little bit too caught up in like, I don't know, the I don't want to call it fear, but people get nervous, I guess. I've, I've seen a lot of creators kind of speak about like they don't want to like oversell, but I don't know. I don't mind posting my affiliate Use links. The right. It doesn't really bother me because I feel like this is my job. Like this is how I pay my bills. And I feel like I'm not being salesy or pushy. I'm not begging nobody like, please shop my links. Please, please get this phone case. Like, no, I just do my makeup and be like, here's a link to the foundation I use. Or I'll get dressed and be like, here's a link to the boots. Like. I don't feel no way about posting, but I get that it makes a lot of people feel, I don't know, I guess a little cringe, but hey. Take the exit. You gotta do what works for you. I'm here to make money, take care of my family, and level up, okay? So I don't mind posting an affiliate link or two or three or four or five. <laughs> so, okay, we're almost here. I'm gonna wrap this up and then I'll continue after my makeup is done. So, looking at 2023, <clears throat> like I said, I brought in $27,411.19 of affiliate linking and that was mainly through Amazon and a little bit of that was through LTK only because I wasn't really taking my LTK serious I wasn't being consistent with it but baby this year oh we got here early come on Jesus <laughs> when I tell you favor is not fair Turn because right y'all again like I said I wasn't really taking LTK serious I wasn't being consistent this year though <laughs> oh my gosh we have a whole strategy lined up I can't wait to share more with y'all about that Okay, right. actually, I'm at my makeup appointment, so I'll continue breaking down the affiliate link and giving y'all tips after I come from this makeup appointment. BRB. my face like we had a problem. Do we have a problem? Do we have? No, no problem. You sure? Y'all got beef. Y'all got beef in real life. No beef. I think we have an issue. I think we have a problem. I think there's beef. This is the fit. Excuse uh, me turning Shelby. Thank Shout out to Shelby for letting me use her office as a dressing room. Her studio as a dressing room. Okay. So I feel like going to the bathroom. So get into this Akira blazer dress. The feathers, 
don't look like this on the model, so don't be fooled. I got feathers added, a little bit extra to make it more poof. I got these from Amazon. I'll link everything in the description. So I got it shortened. So I just want to manage your expectations if you buy it. It's not going to look exactly like this. I had to tweak a little bit, but it was worth it. I think it was a good deal. So I feel like because the blazer is doing a lot, I didn't need too much as far as jewelry. So I'm just going to do this plain gold chain, some gold earrings, and call it a day. And then shout out to Marlene. She just went to Zara to grab me some black pumps because... Well, no, they're not pumps. They're slingbacks, right? Slingback. Yeah, some slingback pumps. Um, but the pumps that I had, I feel like it was just doing too much. Oh, not me getting gloss on my feathers. I feel like it was just doing too much. Like, I already got a lot going on. So I feel like I'm already doing a lot with the couch print, the old school couch print from the 90s. So I didn't want to do too much with the shoes. And then just these plain earrings. Here, here, plain earrings. And that's it. So I'll do a full body fit check once I have my shoes on. Right now I got my Crocs on. And we're, we still have some time. It's about an hour, no, two hours into the interview. So we're gonna just find something to do real quick. And yeah, this is the look. Well, almost. Ew. And Shelby beat my face like we had a real problem. I love that for me. Ah, okay. Okay, y'all, we are en route to the interview at the Uncle Funky's Daughter's headquarters office. And I am back to give you some tips on affiliate linking because just because you set up your Amazon storefront or you set up your LTK page or whatever platform you're gonna use, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be making money on there because huh, I've learned the hard way. <laughs> you gotta have some type of system. So here's some things that I learned. Content will always supersede any graphics that you post, meaning when it comes to converting the people right to take that the come to your storefront, Houston, like whether it's your Amazon storefront or your LTK way. page, people will click it, or people may not click it, but in order to entice them more and motivate people to buy, you need to actually show how things look. And I'm speaking from a perspective of doing a lot of style take content, but you can really do affiliate linking with pretty much anything in your home. This is your furniture, household appliances. You can link virtually anything, but Again, I'm more so talking about style content, but either way, even if you're selling a blanket, some pillowcases, you're trying to get people to buy a coffee maker, showing video or at least picture of things, how they look, how they work, especially if it's something that needs to be applied or used, that is always going to reign supreme compared to just showing a graphic. And here's an example of a graphic right here on the screen. This is a board that I may post on my LTK page or on my story. And it's nice, right? It's, it kind of gives you the vibe of like a Pinterest board to give you some style inspo. And you can do this, like I said, with anything in your home, whether it's, um, if you want to link maybe some lamps, a new couch that you just got, um, a dresser, uh, an ottoman, you know, literally anything you can put on a board is cool. But people will always be drawn more to seeing how it actually looks in your home or how it actually looks on your body or shoes you know, on your feet or makeup on your face. Like people want to see how things are. Just think about your own consumer habits, right? If you walk into a store, you're not just gonna buy something just off the strength of, well you might, but normally people don't just pick up something like, oh I want it cause it's cute. No, you're gonna wanna try it on. Um, you're gonna wanna feel the material. Does it stretch? Like, does it have a good hold to it? There's so many different factors. So the more detail you can give when you are linking things for people to buy, the better, okay? That's number one. Number two, you need some type of, oh that car is, OD. That was crazy. <laughs> Number two, um, put yourself on some type of schedule, you know, even, and I always say this, no matter what type of content you're making, you want to be consistent, but consistency doesn't necessarily mean you're posting every day. It just means that you're on a schedule that you can stick to, something that you can maintain. Um, and when it comes to affiliate linking, maybe you decide, okay, I want to post my affiliate links to different outfits three or four times a week, or maybe I wanna link my favorite makeup products, my favorite skincare products. Maybe I wanna have a rotation of uh, products that I use for my daytime skincare routine versus nighttime skincare routine, and then I rotate with fragrances in between, and I'll post Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like, whatever your you know schedule is, try to stick to it, and I always tell people, stick to something for at least 30 days straight, so then you can go back and look at the data points. Because a lot of y'all are trying new things when it comes to your content, and you're like, oh, it's not working, or oh, people aren't supporting, people aren't watching, but you haven't been doing it long enough to really gauge, is this something that's worth your time, you know? Um, and then another tip that I have is make sure you're staying organized with your affiliate links. So 
it, if you've never used Amazon or LCK, it might be a little confusing, but if you already have the platform, you know what I'm talking about, where you can go and link something through the app, make sure that you're organizing your things in folders so it makes it easy for you to reference. Because let's say, for example, I just posted a story post wearing this blazer dress and then somebody asked me like, oh my God, where'd you get it from? And then maybe they missed the past link or maybe I haven't even posted the, you know, the board yet. I can quickly go to my folders right now and I can pull up blazer dresses and pull this link boop, and send it to them in like 30 seconds. But that would be hard if I didn't have structure and organization within my LTK app. So that's a really helpful tip that I have for y'all. Make sure you break everything down. You can break it down by categories of like what the piece of clothing is. Like if you wanna do blazers, blazer dresses, pants suits, skirt, skirt suits, like two piece sets. You can get as specific as you want. You can have as many folders as you want. Or maybe you don't link that many clothing items and you wanna link things by categories like date night fits or casual fits. You know, you can do whatever you want, but just come up with a system that makes the most sense for you. And then another tip that I have is don't go broke trying to keep up with the Joneses and link all these things and buying all these things. Honey, if you are an Amazon influencer or you get approved for having an LTK page, I guarantee you there are a bunch of things in your house right now that you can link that you already own. And if you don't already own, the great thing about these apps is that you can go in and link dupes. So for example, let's say, you know, I gotta go back to my phone case. Let's say this phone case was sold out or this phone case was bought from a store that is not available to link. Um, for example, in LTK, they have certain retailers that they partner with. This store where I got this phone case from was not an LTK approved uh, affiliate retailer, then I'm unable to link this exact case, but I can go in and just link similar cases. I can pull up uh, the search bar and go to different sites and look at and type in tan or cream square case for iPhone. You know what I'm saying? And if I see some that looks similar to this, I can go ahead and link it and then give my audience info. Like it doesn't have to be the exact same thing. So here's an example on the screen of a denim on denim look that I did. And I actually got this top. Uh, this top was sent to me from a small black owned business in Houston. Shout out to Zila and Vic. And she is a small, you know, boutique business. So obviously she's not an LTK retailer. So what I did was I had Marlene go on to Pretty Little Thing and ASOS and other stores that carry um, cute denim tops. And I created this board that you see here on the screen that gives you inspo for denim on denim. Is it the exact same outfit? No, but that's okay. Because if this top that I had on the video is sold out, people can still get the look. And that's the point of making sure that you are tagging all these things you might not be able to find the exact product and that's okay and this, and this also comes in handy when you don't have a lot of money or you just don't want to spend a lot of money on buying a bunch of stuff you can always do uh, get the look or shop the look type post because you're able to still give the feel of the outfit or something that you already have in your home whether it's like I said a pillow a blanket some candles like whatever you're trying to link in your house you can always go and link similar items and let people shop the look. All right, another tip that I have is make sure that you are linking things that you actually use, that you actually, you know, have. Okay, let's let's put it in perspective of style, right? So let's say it is, I don't know, winter time and it's boot season, sweater season, etc. Don't get so caught up in what you see is trending, what other people are doing where you're just trying to link the same things and it's not authentic to your brand because people can tell real quick if this is your forte, like if this is your expertise or you're just posting because you see other people posting. And I'm not saying that you can't post something that's popular because sometimes it will be like a viral pair of shoes or a viral jacket or blazer, just something that everyone is wearing. And I totally get that, especially when it comes to Amazon pieces. Um, but make sure that you're doing things that are, that are authentic to your style. So that way it doesn't come off forced. And also, uh, you want to just have an authentic brand period. You want people to come to your page because they trust your judgment. They know whether it's style or home decor or whatever. They know they're going to get um, a true transparent feel, like a peek into your world. And, you know, it gives you credibility as a content creator. If you're just posting what you see other people post, people are going to catch wind real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to make sure that you're setting your own trends. And even if you feel like you're posting things that like maybe aren't as popular, keep on posting you will attract your target audience your tribe I always tell people do what is authentic to you and when it comes to the style space I know that sometimes it can be hard to avoid posting what others are posting because that, that happens to me all the time like 
I may post a purse and didn't even realize 40 other content creators have got wind of that same purse. Because you know, when you're in the Amazon Influencer Program or the LTK Program or just any program, you're gonna get alerts on what's what's hot, what's trending, what's on sale. Everyone's trying to be the first to, to post something, like the first to get it out there. I don't really focus on being the first. I focus on competing against myself and being better than my last piece of content. Like I am my own competition, as, as cheesy as that sounds. I really feel that way. So. Don't get too caught up in what other people are doing. You can look at other people's Amazon storefronts or LTKs or whatever inspiration, because I definitely do that. But I still post what I like and I dress how I like to dress. And if other people have similar styles, cool. But I know deep down, like this is my authentic style. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm never out here trying to recreate. And if I do try to recreate a look, I make sure it's clear that I'm inspired by whatever creator, you know? You want to make sure you give people the credit that they deserve. And also, for those of you who are maybe wondering like how to get into this space of doing influencing through affiliate marketing, it's a simple, um, quick two-second application. Um, you can go to Amazon Influencer Instagram page, and I think the link is in their bio where you can apply, and you should get approved. You should have been approved in what, like 24 hours, you think, if that? No. Um, it's pretty quick. Amazon literally takes a couple minutes. Oh, yeah. there's that. Yeah, it processes, and yeah. in like two, three minutes, it's like you're either approved or you Yeah, won. they probably got to make sure you got a real page. Yep. You know, there's not so many stipulations. And then with LTK, it's a little bit different. They're gonna look at like, you know, your engagement. It's not really about followers, but they wanna make sure that you're an active page, you're actually posting. So I definitely encourage you all to apply. Um, if, if this is something that you're interested in, you know, don't let imposter syndrome get to you. Don't start comparing and thinking like, well, everybody is making content and doing affiliate linking. We don't care what everybody's doing. We care about what you're doing, okay? Don't get caught up in the hype. You do what's best for you, and if you wanna make money based off of what you're gonna do anyway because I always tell people you are going to tell somebody where you got that dress from anyway sis somebody is gonna ask you next time you go out to dinner oh girl where you get them shoes from oh I love your lip gloss I love your lipstick people are gonna compliment you and ask you questions oh what you put in your hair how do you get your curls like that like y'all be giving out information and tips and gems for free okay remember that you do it for free anyway so why not get paid for it like I always think about the amount of years I spent linking things and wasn't getting a dime <laughs> like the girls were definitely benefiting off of my free advice and I wasn't getting paid for it now granted you know I had to I had to learn I li you live and you learn in, in this industry you figure out you know ways to make money when I first started giving advice and stuff it wasn't that many affiliate linking programs back then so I don't really you know I charge it to the game like I don't feel no way about it but for you watching this in 2024 baby it's way too much going on it's too many opportunities to get paid for your expertise or for your advice or for you know your style inspo your home decor inspo there's too many ways to get money so i feel like you should be benefiting from that and it is totally okay if you feel a little nervous about it i'm just here to tell you it's very normal affiliate linking is it's an everyday thing for a lot of us so even if you feel like you're being annoying and it's a bunch of people um you know that you feel like you don't want them to see you posting and you think they're gonna talk about you child Worry, <laughs> worry about that and worry about your bills okay your because your bills gonna get to talking with, with the bill the bills are important the bills are way more important than people's opinions your bills and, and expenses your household running that should take precedent over people talking trash about you all right and if they're talking trash and they don't respect your hustle cut them off or or remove them as a follower like that's another thing now we're getting into a whole you know y'all know how I am I start going left but I gotta say what's on my heart a lot of y'all are so worried about what people think. Why don't you just remove those people who you feel like are judging you? you? You ever thought about that? Like going to their page and clicking the little dots, especially on Instagram. Like go to their page, click the little three dots, and you don't have to block them. But you know you can remove people as a follower and they don't get a notification? I am the queen of that, okay? If I feel like somebody is following me, and I haven't done this in a while because, I mean, I don't have the time to go through my followers. But back in the day when I was trying to build my brand and I felt like, it might have been somebody that was like mm, a little shady or maybe they were subbing me or you know just petty stuff or they they weren't really engaging with my content they were what we call like a ghost follower i would just remove them and i would still do it to this day if i had the capacity i don't have the time to look and i don't pay attention to that stuff it doesn't, it doesn't matter anymore but again i'm talking to you someone who is trying to build their brand remove them as a follower do that okay block them okay because you 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 want to you don't want beef you know people get people get offended which is weird to me but people take social media real serious so you don't you don't have to block them but go ahead and remove them you don't need that energy you don't need them 
them um, monitoring spirits you don't need people lurking on your page remove them and focus on doing what you're supposed to do for your household, okay? And that's getting to this bag, getting to this money. And then my last tip on affiliate linking, make sure that you are paying attention to your data. Oh, actually I have two more tips. Before I talk about the data, make sure you are linking things that are in stock. <laughs> Le learn that the hard way. It's so funny, I was showing Marlene my data from last year, because she wasn't working with me last year, so she was curious to know, like, oh, well, how was your numbers? Child, the numbers weren't. <laughs> the numbers weren't numbering. <laughs> it wasn't adding up. Like, I would have, let's say, I, once again, back to the phone case, for example, let's say I linked this phone case, I would have like 4,000 clicks, 4,000 clicks on the phone case, maybe three sales. Like, maybe I made $20. Like. <laughs> I wasn't making no money because I was linking things that weren't even in stock. Or if they were in stock, let's say I linked this blazer dress, it was like one size left and it was extra small. <laughs> like what? It was a like a, an a average a size that it was a size that wasn't average. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So make sure you're being strategic. If you're gonna be buying stuff or tagging stuff that are similar to what you already have, make sure you're tagging things that are actually in stock so people can shop. Because you can't make no money if it's out of stock and people can't purchase it. And then lastly, pay attention to your data. Go look at the things that are actually converting. When people are clicking um, and going into your store and using your affiliate links, look to see what they're actually buying versus what they're not. And if it's in stock but nobody bought it, maybe that's they don't like the way you styled it. Maybe it's just not you know, something that is in season. There could be a million different reasons. Or maybe you had bad reviews. Like Just pay attention to your data and make sure that before you continue to make content with new items, you're analyzing the things that you already posted to see what converted. If something converted well, go make some more content with it. Like, if you had a jacket that had, you know, 3,000 clicks, people actually love that jacket. So go make some more content with that jacket and then go find other jackets. Like, you don't have to buy anything, but you can link other jackets. You can do, hell, you can even post, um, like, I see it on TikTok all the time where people are like, you want to get this jacket but it's sold out or do you like this jacket here are five different dupes and they just show pictures on the screen where they're showing you different different jackets that look like the jacket that they had that did well and they're giving you different price points they're telling you how to shop high and low like there's so many ways that you can spin something that did well so i just want to encourage you like again look at your data Stay consistent with your posting, your affiliate links. It doesn't mean you have to post every day, but know that like you being on a schedule that you can stick to is always gonna help out. But know that sticking to a schedule that works for you is always gonna help you to maintain your presence when it comes to affiliate linking. And remember to stay authentic. Like whether it's home decor, style, appliances, beauty, skincare, all the things, it doesn't matter. Do something that you really care about because it's going to show. It's going to come across in your content that you care. All right, so we had to stop at the cleaners to get something fixed right quick. <laughs> Long story. Um, the next time, not the next time, when I come back, we'll be starting the interview. So, <laughs> BRB. My name is Shay Regis, better known as Shay Nicole XO on all social media platforms, and I'm a full-time lifestyle content creator, or what I like to call a digital creator. And I focus on motherhood, marriage, lifestyle, definitely self-care, and just really helping to empower and elevate women to find themselves, especially if you're a mom, after birth. <laughs> I just want to show you you all. You should let me love you. Let me be the one to give you everything. Love and protection, make me your selection, show you the way love is supposed to be. Baby, you should let me love you, love you, love you, love So my number one piece of advice to content creators is based on the question that I get all the time, which is, how do you keep going or how do you stay consistent? And that's because I'm creating content about stuff I really care about. A lot of you all, sometimes you see what's trending or what's popping off or what you feel like is going to make you money and bring you deals and you don't really care about that type of stuff. You need to create content based off of what you care about, what you're passionate about, because when the engagement is low, when there's no money coming in, when it's getting real slow, the algorithm is playing games, what is going to keep you going? It has to come from the heart. And I have created my platform based off of creating content out of service. I've always had a heart to serve. Oh, you. Yeah. Your true beauty's description 
Looks so good that it hurts. You're a dime plus 99, and it's a shame. Don't even know what you're worth. All right, y'all, we made it back home, and now Marlene and I are starving. So we're gonna take our laptops and do a working lunch. So let's go. Okay, so we are here about to try this Cajun place for the first time. That we just randomly found. <laughs> we just found it, we're hungry. <laughs> We are trying the Mardi Gras punch, and that consists of house rum and Malibu rum, OJ pineapple, and a little grenadine. So we're gonna have that in some water because baby, we need to hydrate. Um, and then we're gonna do like a work style lunch where we both have our laptops here. So we're gonna do some planning. Um, planning for the week ahead. Thank yes. you, yes. So we are in planning mode because we have a lot to accomplish before I head out. I'm going to New York to see my line sisters, hang out with my best friends. So I'll be in New York the end of next week. So we just need to go ahead and like plan what we're gonna batch create as far as content um, and make sure like, just going over like emails, make sure we have all of our uh, uh, how do you say it? We cross all of our. T I said cross my, cross my dot and T my. <laughs> we <laughs> make sure we we dot our eyes and cross our T's. I think it's cross your T's and dot your eyes. Cross your T's and dot your eyes. Yes. That's what we're working on today. And also, we're going to be working on coming up with a good schedule for me so that I can really. Because remember, I told y'all I was moving off of vibes and energy. Pray for me, y'all. <laughs> We need to come up with a schedule that I can stick to and to help me be more productive when it comes to recording and editing and outsourcing as well. We're gonna try to crunch some numbers to figure out who we can bring on based on a retainer, which is like the person gets like a flat fee and then they do services for us. So I'm looking into finding some support with like makeup, um, hair, like, you know, just little stuff that I could do myself, but it's just easier if someone else does it and I just show up to make the content, you know? So that's what our meeting is about. And we're going to eat. Because one thing we're going to do, baby, is eat. Okay? And that's that. Where you go, they stop and stare. Because you're bad and it shows. From your head to your toes, out of control. Baby, you know. Baby, you know. Never worry about what I do. I'll be coming home back to you. Every night, doing you right. Deserves good things. Alright y'all, we finished our planning meeting. It was a success, but now we have the itis, so... Big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought I was going to go home and record, but it, mm, mm -mm, it's not happening. I need a nap. Um, anyway, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Please let me know in the comments, do you like this style of vlogging? Because I'm still experimenting. My goal is to continue posting every Sunday at 9 a.m. Hopefully by the time you see this, I have stuck to that schedule because, you know, getting consistent with YouTube was one of my main goals for 2024. So let me know, do you like this style of vlogging where I'm on the go, I'm taking you along with me, I'm also answering questions or dropping gems, giving advice, or would you prefer me to be sitting stationary? Like, is it too much going on? You want me to just sit down how I used to do and give advice? Just let me know. Do you want a combination of both? Just let me know in the comments. It'll help me tremendously as I continue to create content for you all. I really appreciate you for watching this. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.